Windows Wednesdays. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, this is Zach with PC Simplest, and today we are continuing our discussion on the Windows 10 settings. So, if you have been unfamiliar with this, go ahead and check out our last two videos on the Windows 10 settings. Today, we are going to get started and go to our settings panel. In our last video, we pretty much talked 10 minutes about the system settings. Well, you see we have all these other settings to go over, so we're just going to go ahead and click on devices. And under devices, you're going to see printers and scanners. And this is basically similar to your Windows 7 when you would click on control panel. You have your printers and your basically other installable hardware, you know, any type of scanner or um, like digital camera, stuff like that. That'll show up under uh, somewhere under here. But right now we have printers and scanners and you can add a printer or scanner. It shows you what we have installed currently. I don't have a printer. I don't believe in printing. Printing is obsolete. True story. Anyway, um, just some basic settings here. Nothing too much to go over here is very, you know, this is very straight to the point. If you want to install a printer or scanner, here's where you will go. Here's where you'll find those printers or scanners that you have installed. And you have, let's see, connected devices. And here it shows you basically everything that is plugged into your computer. And I have my HP monitor. I have my other LG monitor. Uh, basically my headset right here, uh, microphone, same thing, and uh, Netgear wireless uh, adapter, uh, Razer keyboard, and my Razer mouse. So anything that you have plugged in, it'll show up here. So that's really convenient when you're plugging in new media and you're not sure if it installed correctly or not sure if it's showing up. You can come to connected devices and see if it's actually showing up. Uh, mouse and touchpad, and here's where you can adjust some of those settings. Your primary button, if you're left-handed, you can obviously change it to right. And you can basically uh, change your mouse scroll settings. And that's pretty much it for that those settings right there. For typing, uh, that's pretty cool. I haven't really looked too much on this, but autocorrect misspelled words. I wonder what that works in. I'd have to look into that. Highlight misspelled words, that's pretty cool too. And autoplay, this is what happens when you plug in any type of external media, whether it's a CD, a thumb drive, anything like that. You can basically set what the default to do. So uh, anytime you plug in a removable de device, import photos and videos to Dropbox. I like to say open folder to view files. You can obviously change it to whatever you want. Memory card, import photos to Dropbox, no thanks. I want it to open folder to view files. That's always the most convenient thing for me. So anyway, that's devices, so that's pretty quick. That was a quick one. The next thing we could do is go to network and internet, and here it'll show you all the Wi-Fi connections that are available. And you see I have my Sock Valley Geeks that I am connected to, and you have some advanced op options and manage Wi-Fi settings that you can go into, and you can basically set, you know, really specific things here, and same with here. So really, you can go over these and check them as you wish, and they're, it's all really self-explanatory. You can read what it says and follow along. And here's more related settings, and you know, again, you can read that, and if you need to go over some of that stuff, go for it. This option is really cool, though. I really like that they give you an overview of how much data that you are using now. Uh, this computer is only Wi-Fi, so it shows in the last 30 days, I've used 38 gigs of data on this machine, which I'm kind of surprised about because I don't use it too often. So you can actually go into the usage details and see what has used the most amount of data. So if you click that, and it might take a minute or two, so I'm not going to worry about it, but you can click on usage details and get a really in-depth uh, idea of what is using the most data. And we'll move on to VPN. This, if you need to VPN back into your work, which VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, you can set up all of your settings through this, and that's pretty convenient. Dial-up, I don't know who uses dial-up anymore. I don't even know why they have that option. This is, what, 2015? Nobody should use dial-up. Get out of here. Uh, Ethernet, we have, we have nothing there because I don't have an Ethernet cord plugged into this computer. You might, so you might have options there. Proxy. This, if you want, you can set this up if you want to use an outside proxy, and we can discuss in another video what a proxy actually is. So if you don't know, check back at a later date, we'll do a proxy video. But anyway, all of your proxy settings are easily accessible through here if you want to make any adjustments. And we'll go on to personalization. This is where it could get fun. Personalization is big. 
Um, we kind of talked about this stuff before in another video with personalizing your start menu. So we shouldn't really have to go too much in depth here, but you can change your background, stuff like that, your colors, and again, this will change the colors of your uh, start menu and things like that. Your lock screen, we can change the your, your lock screen when your computer locks, and we can just set it to a picture, whatever you want. Themes. So with the themes, you can click in there just like in any other version of Windows, uh, Windows what, Vista uh, uh, 7 and 8, and select different themes that you want to use. So that's where that option is now, and start you can do uh, adjust a few little options there in the start menu. So not much right there for personalization, which is all right. And we'll go to accounts. So here from our your account, Workstation, that is my local account, and we can sign in with a Microsoft account. I choose not to do that because I don't want to always sign in with my stupid Microsoft account. Plain and simple. That's down. Moving on. Your picture. I can change my picture if I wanted to. Obviously, you could do that if you want. Not too much to say there. Sign in options. You can set a password for signing in. Again, that's not something I want to do because when I start my computer, I just want it to log right in for me. But if you have kids or other family members who constantly try to use your computer, you may want to put a password. Uh, pin, you can pretty much do the same thing. Picture password, same thing. Different levels of um, password protection. So anyway, work access to connect to work or school. Oh man, it's features only available in Windows 10 Pro. Wah, wah. That's all right. So we can't really go into that one. Family and other users. So uh, you can basically sign in other people uh, from your family and stuff with their Microsoft account. Sync your settings. Um, this only works if you're using a Microsoft account. Again, you're gonna have to go about that on your own because I don't believe in signing into my computer with a Microsoft account. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, time and language. This is all pretty self-explanatory. If you need to change your time, your time zone, anything like that, you can do that here, adjust it there. And that's pretty much all we gotta go there. If you wanna do your military time, you can adjust that there as well. Region and language. If you speak another language or want, a, you want to use a different language, you can obviously set those options here. Speech. If you wanna use your microphone to do your text to speech, you can adjust some of the settings here. So, again, all of this is really self-explanatory. You pretty much read it and follow along. If you need more in-depth tutorials on this, please let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to do that for you. Ease of access. If you have a hard time hearing or if you have a hard time seeing things, you can adjust a lot of the settings here. They have a narrator, so when you hover over somewhere, it will talk to you and tell you what's going on. Uh, you have your magnifier. You can turn on the magnifier, and bam, there you go. You can see things more clearly. High contrast, again, if you have a hard time seeing, this may be something that you want to adjust. So, closed captions, again, these are all pretty much self-explanatory, and you, if you need to do something like that, go ahead and go over them, try them out, and test them out. Keyboard, you can turn on the on-screen keyboard if you need to. Uh, sticky keys for keyboard shortcuts, everything. Again, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, mouse, you can adjust the pointer size, pointer color, and mouse key, stuff like that. Other options, you can turn off animations, show windows background. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. Again, it's really stuff that you need to go over because it's all really customization, uh, customization that you would do for yourself. So if it's something that you really wanna look into, look into it a little further. If you have questions, please leave me a comment. I'm basically showing you basically what the Windows 10 system settings look like and a little bit of what you can and can't do. The next two on our list are privacy and updates and security, and those are actually a little bit more lengthy, and I've already spent a lot of time on just filling you in on the rest of this stuff here. So we're going to do another video, and hopefully next Wednesday we'll get that pushed out on privacy and update and security, because those two are really some of the most important things to talk about in Windows 10, because privacy is a huge concern, and the new way that they do updates are a big concern too. So I really want to take some time to discuss both of those things as much as I can and get really kind of in depth with that so we all kind of understand what's going on and what's changed in Windows 10. Again, if you have any comments or suggestions, concerns, or want more help on any of this stuff, please leave a comment below and I'd be happy to get back to you as soon as I can and maybe make another video really going in depth with one of these options and we can really show you what you need to do.